how I find my battles This is how I find my battles This is how I find my battles This is what we're doing this morning Oh, this is how I find my battles This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. That's right. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my This is how I find This is how I find my battles 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 Hey 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 Give me the fire Give me the black I'm so
Amen. church. Yes. Good morning, Brother Ruben. Good morning, church. Good morning. All right. Just as a reminder that while I am doing the announcements, please get your tithes and offerings ready. We do have a couple of repeats this week, so we're going to fly through them really fast. First one, please. So partner with a pastor. So last month, PCC contributed $898. Woo! Come on, church. That's all y'all's effort. And PCC matched that, and we have a whopping 1800 for last month. Amen. So just as a reminder that this is still going on till October of this year. So if you guys are wanting to give for this month, please mark down your offerings as missions and outreach. Next one, please. Upper Room Prayer, we're going to tie this one with our weekly fellowships as well. So Upper Room is going to be Monday through Friday, one at noon and one at 7.30. You guys have heard this every week. And our weekly fellowships are also going to be throughout the week as well. If you guys have any questions, want the Zoom links, want to know where they're located, please, please, please message us on our Facebook page. Next one, please. PCC 28th anniversary. Come on, y'all. Woo! We are less than a month away from 28 amazing years here at PCC. Just to mark your calendars, it is September 5th, regular Sunday service here. We are going to have a guest speaker. It is Dr. Doug Stringer. You guys can bring anyone you want. You guys, friends, families, anyone, please invite them. Our, there should be a slide on our Facebook page that you can save and you can send to people. Please, please, please help and celebrate with us 28 amazing years. Amen, church? Amen. Next one, please. PCC Family Retreat. Come on, y'all. Woo! All right, all right. Official dates are going to be the first weekend of October, which is October 1st through 3rd. That's a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday. It's going to be at Forest Glen like we've had it in the past couple of years. Please, please, please mark your calendars. See how long it takes to drive there. It's not far, I promise. Registration did start this month. You guys can see the prices there. Anyone that is nine years old and older, we will be checking driver's license. It's $134 per person. Two to eight years old is $67. And then if you are under two years old, you are free. Yeah. Yes, the babies. All right. Check, cash and check only, please, please, please. I believe it's Tita Bernadette who is in charge of registration, so please see her for any questions or to pay your fees. We do still have our t-shirt design contest still going on. All of our t-shirt designs are in the lobby, so please, please, please vote so we can reveal which one won and which lucky person gets a free retreat. Yay! All right, next one, please. This one is a marker calendar. It is PCC spring, but it is in summer cleaning. Yeah! All right, mark your calendars for August 28th here at PCC at 9 a.m. We are going to clean the church. I say it every time. It is not a burden. It is a blessing. But now we all get to clean the church. So please, 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 if you had any questions, please see Kuya Young for more information on that. Last one is Jesus Reign. So this is a new event. Please mark your calendars. It is September 11th. Um, of this year, it is at Buffalo Bayou. It is a full day event. So it ranges, there's a parade, there's a worship set, there's a whole bunch of things to do. It is a free event, amen, amen. So the please screenshot, take a picture of that address. If you had any information, I believe more information will be on our website as well as the Facebook page. I believe that's the last one before the best announcement. Yes. All right. Drum roll for the best announcement. Cleaning crew. And guess whose name is up there? Mine. All right. If you see your last name on there, I say it every single time. I know every single one of y'all. So you guys will be cleaning side by side with me. It is a blessing, not a burden to clean this amazing church. Amen. 
Amen. All right, that is the end of the announcements, and I'd love to pray for our tithes and offerings. Lord Jesus, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for bringing us here safely, Lord. Thank you for all these amazing dates with us, Lord Jesus, all these amazing things coming up for our church, Lord Jesus, for our bride, Lord. We just lift these tithes and offerings and these events to you today, Lord, because none of them is worthy of us. You are only worthy, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for all that you have in store for us today. Thank you for the word, Lord, and thank you for all that you have in store for PCC. In Jesus' name. James Pino and his wife, Rocio, had already gone to bed for the night when they heard an unexpected knock at the front door. When James opened the door, he was met by two men asking for help with their motorcycle. He went outside to help while one of the men stayed by the door where Rocio stood watching her husband. Is your name Maria? The man asked her. No, I'm Rocio Pino, she replied. Suddenly, three gunshots shattered the stillness of the night, and when James turned around, he saw his wife fall to the ground. The attackers then jumped on their motorcycle and sped away. Because they lived in one of Colombia's red zones, areas controlled by the Armed Revolutionary Forces of Colombia, FARC, no emergency services would respond. The road to their village was heavily mined and guarded by armed FARC guerrillas. So James and his daughters were left to watch Rocio die on their front doorstep. Rocio was known for sharing the gospel with everyone she met, especially the guerrilla fighters. All who come here will hear about Christ, she had said. James later learned that Rocio's killers were probably retaliating against her for witnessing to a female guerrilla who had stopped by their house a few weeks earlier. The Lord is waiting for you, she had told the woman, handing her a New Testament. James knew the killers. They had arrived in the community two weeks earlier and introduced themselves as members of the FARC. Like many other guerrillas in the area, they occasionally stop to talk with James. He struggles now to forgive them. That step is very difficult to say. When I see her attackers, I forgive you knowing that these are scars that never get erased, he said. After the attack, James and his daughters moved to a safer area. Rocio took seriously Jesus' great commission. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, Matthew 28, 19. Knowing the risks, she and her husband chose to live and share the gospel in a dangerous area of Colombia. Though it cost Rocio her life, it was a decision that was worthy of Jesus and the advancement of his gospel. today church who else is good this morning other than this brother here how are you this morning you are blessed how big is the blessing brothers this much how this be is blessing measurable so how are you this morning blessed how big is it measurable I would say sometimes we measure it 
And the reason why I said we measure it, because if we notice that the blessing is this big, and your problem is this big, you get overwhelmed by the problem. But if you see your blessing this big, and you shrink your problem, you're overwhelmed with the blessing of God. So what's overwhelming you this morning? Is it the blessing or the problem? So that means your blessing is this big, your problem, you shrink it that way. Can we shrink the problem or we can magnify it? We can magnify, we can shrink. It depends on us. We can either magnify our problem and shrink the blessing of God that you see the bigness of your problem and the smallness of our God. But you can decide, I magnify my God and shrink my problem. Then, if that is the case, you can say, I am blessed. You can say that well. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Blessings are, in many ways, there are spiritual blessings. We love financial blessing, brother. But there's a blessing that is invisible. And that's even more important. Because it goes beyond the natural. I'm not preaching. But I'm just sharing something here. Do you, do you, you want to hear a story? I, I was talking with somebody. And somebody told me, shame on you. He, he told me, shame on me. But I know he was kidding. And I said, why? Because you had yourself vaccinated. And you don't know what's getting, you're getting in, what you're getting. I didn't say anything. I, he said, shame on me because I have myself vaccinated. And I said, I didn't say anything because I don't feel anything here. But then I remember when I was a young boy, brother, at school, at school, in the Philippines, brother, I have all the vaccination, I think. If because if the teacher said, the doctor is coming, and if the vaccination is TB, I have a TB vaccine. If it is malaria, I have a mal malaria vaccination. Smallpox, I have a smallpox vaccination. Name it, pull you, I have everything. I'm 64, I'm still okay. <laughs> See, I have all the vaccination. So we become guinea pig. We became guinea pig. And so when the guy said, shame on, shame on me, I said, you don't know, I have all the vaccination already. And it's not my choice. I didn't choose it. But I'm okay. And then there's this news that the vaccination that we took, brother, is only a small percent effective. And so there's the news that there will be a third dose for the COVID. And I said, I'm ready not only for the third, but even for the fourth and the fifth. Do you know why? Because of you. I'm so exposed in the church. I have a meeting one time with a lot of pastors here. And we're all seated. And all of, and they, I don't know why they said they were not vaccinated. I, didn't, I don't know. I am the only person vaccinated there. And I just keep quiet. And the reason why I had myself vaccinated, because I don't want to transmit what I got from them to you. That's the main reason. And so... Everybody stand up, please, and look around you. Don't greet anybody. Just stand up. <laughs> just stand up. Just look and then just say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Just say hi. Just say hi. Okay. Praise God. Don't move. Just stay where you are. Just move. And then you may sit down. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, if later on, if later on, if somebody, if you don't want to be hugged, because of what's happening now, that the, there are more COVID patients now. If you don't want to be hugged, just extend your hand like that. That means I'm not ready for your hug. It's okay? If you're not comfortable with that person, grab your mask right away. G grab your mask right away. If you're comfortable not having a mask, it's okay. So that's how we are. Because what if this continue for 100 years? Still we'll have a church. We will not close our church. We'll not. If this will continue for 100 years, we still have this church. But if you didn't want to hug, just do like that. That means you're going to hug me, brother. That, you know what's that? If you're not comfortable, people not wearing masks, wear your mask, beloved. Wear your mask. So if you don't want to be vaccinated, it's fine. Okay? We have nothing against you. Because a lot of ministers don't want to be vaccinated. But I'm willing for the third dose, brother, and the fourth and the fifth one. 
because I don't want to transmit something to you because I'm so exposed. I meet people everywhere. And, and they are brothers who are not scared, so we meet. And so I just want to be, I don't want to, I want to transmit something good to you, okay? We love you, church. So when we greet now, just stand up and hi. That's starting now, okay? <laughs> praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that's my story. Praise Jesus. Okay. Are you ready for the word this morning? Do we have some new faces this morning? Uh, let me scan. New faces. Oh, Sister Dorothy. Who is that beside you, Sister Dorothy? Is that one of your children? Who is that beside you, Sister Dorothy? Oh, okay, okay. Because again, I said, okay. But welcome again. Welcome back, Sister. Oh, yeah, I remember now. Okay. I remember. Sister. Because you're covered, Sister. That's why. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Are we ready for the word this morning? Welcome, my brother. Welcome. Okay, please, God. Would you, would you stretch your hands to our brother Marco, please? Lord, there is your mouthpiece this morning. God, he is not just prepared mentally, but spiritually, Father. And let your Holy Spirit move mightily, freely from her to everyone this morning. Overflow, her, overflow him, O oh God, from him to everyone. Overflow him, O oh God, with your precious Holy Spirit. To make a difference in this church this morning. Thank you, Father God, for what you will do to this precious, precious vessel. In Jesus' name, amen. Is it on? Hey, there you go. Good morning. So, I am going to hug you <clears throat> uh, later, not now. Uh, you know, um, times are different nowadays, so my, um, I was on the phone call with my uh, siblings um, the other day, and they were in in lockdown again uh, in the Philippines, and they were, you know, kind of joking about it because uh, there is the called Delta uh, variant now, and they say that it's going to go on forever because it's only in letter D. So it's going to go all the way to <laughs> to letter Z. So it's 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 going to take a while, all right? But there is um, a quote that I uh, I read. It says that why are we afraid of the Delta when we have the Alpha? and the Omega, all right? So, so, uh, so Jesus and his blood is all that we need. You know, if, uh, if the Lord is um, telling you to take some precautions and get this and that, then, you know, it is between you and the Lord. And, but we believe that the Lord will protect us and regardless of whether we get it or not, uh, his blood is greater than any sickness there is. All right? So that is not, that is not the message today. I just wanted to say that. So uh, before we go on to, to the message, I wanted to take this opportunity again to bless someone. So uh, I know most of you like coffee, right? I don't. But uh, so I'm going to go ahead and bless you with uh, a cup of coffee, I guess. How much is a cup of coffee, Angela, at Starbucks? Eight dollars? Two forty-four. Okay, so you're gonna be able to buy a few uh, <laughs> uh, for a few days of, of coffee. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna have you open your Bibles, whether that is your. Um, see, I lost my train of thought whether that's electronic or your Bible itself, okay? 
And uh, so I'm going to say a verse. So I want you to look for that verse. And if that verse is highlighted in your Bible, so just come up here. So the first one to come gets the prize. All right? So, so you, it's going to be a very familiar verse. It's not John 3.16, but it's going to be a very familiar verse. Uh, so it should be highlighted. So if it's not, then it could mean two things. One, your Bible is brand new. Or the second one is you haven't opened your Bible. So we can forgive you with the first one. The second one, you're going to have to talk to Pastor Glenn later and explain yourself. So, uh, so if you can open your Bibles in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 3. So the first one will come up here with a highlighter. You're not included, love. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Come up here. All right. So what does it say? All right. Very good. Huh? You got it too, bro? Okay. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give one to you later. All right, so um, let's go ahead and open our Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 33. So that's going to be uh, our main uh, text for today. Um, there's uh, about 11 verses, so we're just going to uh, go through it uh, section by section and then try to put it all together at the end. All right, so... Um, Exodus chapter 33, verse, we'll start with verse 7. It says there, Now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. So we'll stop there. So uh, for the last few weeks, we've uh, heard pastor talked about the Holy Spirit in the tabernacle. So the tent of meeting in this scripture is actually not the same as the tabernacle. So this one is uh, located outside of the camp of the Israelites where the tabernacle when it was built was actually in the center of, of the camp. And um, as we notice here, it says here that the, the purpose of this tent is for Moses and for the Israelites to... Um, to inquire uh, of the Lord, while the tabernacle is used more for formal uh, worship and sacrifice, and that's where you can find the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant. So there's a big difference there. But why did the, um, Moses call it tent of meeting? Well, I don't really know. But uh, it says there that it is a tent, and that's where he meets the Lord. And so um, it's a tent of meeting. Um, and it says there that anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. So two things that I wanted to share there is that anyone can inquire. So it's an open invitation. So it's not reserved for the special. It's not reserved for the anointed. But it is for everyone uh, to go to. And it is great to know that the God of the universe has an open invitation for every one of us, regardless of whether uh, we think that we are worthy or not, the invitation is there for us to, to meet with him. Um, it's the opportunity to commune with God is available to everyone. And then the other thing that says there is that the tent is located outside the camp. Uh, it was said um, a couple of times there, that in order for us to commune with God, there has to be some type of intentionality, and then there should be um, a separation uh, from the camp. Uh, if we wanted quality time with the Lord, then we need to detach ourselves for the time being with what is going on with our lives. Uh, we cannot 
have a quality time with God if you're busy at work or other things. So you have to separate yourself. That's what Moses did, is that for the time being, he would go out of the camp, kind of forget all his uh, responsibilities, so to speak, and just be alone with God and, and commune with him. So that is really important, that if there is an invitation and that we have to separate ourselves from our daily lives to be able to experience it in a different way. So let's move on. Verse 8 says that whenever Moses went out to the tent and all the people rose and stood at the entrances, all the people rose and stood at the entrances to their tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. Verse 9, as Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Whenever the people saw that the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they all stood and worshipped, each at the entrance to their tent. So, so basically, they're, they're outside their tent, and they are looking at Moses while he goes in there. So it, depending on how far they are, so they're just looking and looking. He said, is Moses in the, in the tent? So they just keep on looking until they see the cloud coming down. said, oh, yeah, he's in there. And then once he's in there, and then that's when they started worshiping right up their tent. So that's when they do their worship. They could have gone closer because it's an open invitation. They could have detached themselves from their tents and went closer, but they did not. Um, so why did they stay in their tents? Well, number one, because they were scared. Uh, in uh, Exodus 20, it says that when they heard God speaking and there was thunder, there was lightning, they were scared. They told Moses, well, you go talk to God, just relay the message over to us, but we don't want him speaking to us directly because uh, we're scared. We're going to die. So they were scared. Um, the people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick cloud where God was. And another reason is probably is that they were contented where they were. So they saw the act, they saw the works of God, but that was enough for them. So you see, sometimes we're contented with just a glimpse of, of God in our lives. Um, you know, a little bit of uh, goosebumps, a little bit of closing our eyes, a few tears, a prayer here and there, and then after that, hey, what's for lunch? And then forget all about God. See, the cloud that is God saying, I'm here. Are you coming? Uh, but most of the time, we're just contented where we are. Just a little bit of him, that's good enough for us. Uh, so the cloud is God saying, I'm here. But when, when we see the cloud, what do we do? Do we run in or do we run away or stay where we are? So verse 11 says, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to camp, but his young aide Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. So it says there that God spoke to Moses face to face, meaning very close, very intimate um, relationship. And when you talk to a friend, then there's a, you know, there's an ease to it. Um, you know, there is, um, there is comfort, um, there's honesty, um, so there's no barrier when you talk to a friend. Um, you know, I've known um, 
Bada Bong for uh, 30 years. So we, we've known each other since we were in diapers, so basically. Uh -huh. We were one when we met. Uh, so we've known each other for 30 years. We've, we've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly in each other. And basically there is no secret, we know each other. Uh, but, but at the end of it, regard, um, in spite of all those things, the friendship remains. So there's honesty there, there's um, transparency. You know, same way with the Manitos, probably known them about the same time. And uh, according to Sister Guada, that they can tell if I'm upset by just the way I walk. I don't know how they could tell that, but I don't know how I walk when I'm upset. But according to them, they could tell if I'm upset <laughs> by the way I walk. So I don't know, Brother Mong, do you? <laughs> so, because they know, they know the, the intimate detail of me. Um, and I know the same of them. So, Brother Wong and I have been very close for a long time. I actually met his wife uh, when we were teenagers. That's how long it was. And, uh, you know, that friendship has been transferred over to, to our kids. Uh, she she kind of actually has a key to our house, uh, to the garage. She can just come in and out whenever. And the same goes with my kids. We have the code to their house so we can get all their stuff. <laughs> but, uh, but, but there is, there is transparency there uh, that, that is, you know, if, if people would say that if you know the person, especially the, the ugly part of them, sometimes they don't want to know. But God wants that. And that's the relationship that he has with, with Moses, that uh, all the ugliness, all the good things, he knows. And, uh, and what a, a special privilege that the creator of the world wanted to be your friend. And, uh, you know, one of the secrets in, in Moses' ministry is that, you know, he spent a lot of time in prayer and, and in communion with God in that tent. Um, you know, that was the reason why he was able to lead uh, a million people who are stubborn, hard-headed, and that's the reason why he had the endurance and also the patience. Probably the most patient person I've seen in the Bible. Stubborn, a, hundred, a million people, stubborn and hard-headed for 40 years. I don't know about it long. It may <laughs> for 40 years. And that's because of the time that he spends with God. The guy was so in tune with God that when God was upset and said that he would destroy the Israelites said, take me instead. I can't do that. Honestly, I can't. And then probably most of you won't either. You know, uh, 40 years, maybe 40 days, maybe, maybe. Because it took them three days after all the miracles. And then they were complaining. So I probably, I know I don't have that, that kind of patient, Pastor. <laughs> And, uh, you know, probably the first time that God says, I will destroy them, I would just like, go right ahead. Let me, let me back up as, as much as I could, and you can go do your thing. But, uh, but he was able to do that. He was able to lead um, the Israelites for 40 years because of his time with the Lord and being in the presence of God on a regular basis. And, and that's what we need uh, as, as, um, as individuals, as leaders uh, of the church. And it says there that Joshua did the same thing. So, um, you know, he valued intimacy as much as, as Moses did. Moses did. Uh, probably one of the reasons there is that he saw it modeled in his life. He saw uh, being an apprentice to Moses that he saw what he did 
But what I like about it is that, you know, he did not stop. When Moses left, he stayed there. And because what he probably believes is that the things that are available to Moses is available to him. If Moses can have a friendship with God, then he could as well. And, uh, and the same goes with us. It is available to us as well. And it's just a matter of us taking advantage of that opportunity to, to have that uh, friendship uh, with the Lord. Um, most of the time, we just know of him, but don't know him. So, um, verse 12. It says, that Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, lead this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. Growing up, uh, our house was surrounded by uh, rice fields. Um, and our neighbors, some, most of the neighbors that we have, other than the ones living next to the street, are actually really far. It's probably from here, maybe to Chick-fil-A would be the next house, or sometimes to Fiesta. So it's, it's far, because it's, it's rice field all over. And, and when we usually go to our friends, instead of going around the, the main street, which would take forever, we should just walk across the rice field. Because that's, that's the shortest. Although it is far, it is the shortest. And we would just you know, go back and forth that we would actually create a, a trail or a pathway. Um, you know, if you walk on, on grass uh, over and over again, then you would create a path wherein the grass doesn't grow anymore. Right? So um, when Moses was saying, teach me your ways, actually the word is darak, which means to tread or to trample. So it refers to, to the path worn by constant walking. Path worn by constant walking. Although it is a literal translation, but it, is, it refers to the terms of God's customary way of doing things. So when, uh, when the people were afraid to talk to God, Moses did the other way. He wanted to know God himself. And he wanted to know his character. He wanted to know more than just, you know, seeing the Red Sea parted or uh, the manna coming down from heaven. He said, why? I want to know the character. I want to know the why. I want to know the wisdom. I want to know the heart of this person who did all these things. And sometimes we stop at, you know, at the signs and wonders and thinking that's all there is to our God, wherein it is, he is more personal um, than that. So he wanted to seek the, the provider more than the provision, the healer more than the healing, and the blesser more than the blessing. So he's so familiar with how God works that it, you know, when things go bad, it doesn't really bother him anymore. And, and sometimes when we're not familiar with the way God works in our lives, then when things starts to shake and start to crumble, then that's when fear and doubt would set in instead of of reminding ourselves that regardless of what is happening around us, God is still in control. He's not surprised by any of the things that are happening in our lives, but uh, he's still taking care of us regardless of the circumstance that we see. So, um, and that's what we need, to be familiar with who he is uh, more than, more than the... Uh, the wonders that, that we see. Um, verse 14. Are you okay? Am I going too fast? I kind of wanted to go section by section, so that's kind of how I am. Um, so verse 14 says, The Lord replied, 
my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, please do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. Verse 18, then Moses said, now show me your glory. So two things that uh, Moses did there. One was the word presence, and the other one was the word glory. And we've seen pastor, we've heard pastor discuss the presence of God. So, uh, so the presence, the word, the Hebrew word is panim which literally means face, right? So implying that the close and personal encounter with the Lord. So the only power and we claim um, over anybody is that the presence of God goes with us. Without the presence of God, then we are just like everybody else. So we are just like a, we are just a building full of people. That's who we are. Or we are just an organization that um, goes through ritual on a consistent basis. Without the presence of God, there is no power. And there, uh, we are just exercising things in futility with no power and no ability to transform and, and change lives without the presence of God. Uh, Brother Wong's favorite verse always, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit. Without the presence of God, without the spirit of God, then all of this is just an exercise for nothing. And um, the, the privilege to seek his presence should be the main goal that we should have as, as believers. Uh, as Christian leaders, as a congregation, as a church, that should be the primary thing that we should focus on. And, you know, sometimes we get hang up with programs and things of that nature that we forget that the presence of God should be primary and everything else would fall into place. So um, when Moses said, show me your, now show me your glory. So the word there means abundance. So it seems like the more Moses experienced God, then the more he wanted of him. You know, and that is, that is not very typical because usually we are contented with just the small, small glory that we experience, small relationship we experience with God. So, you know, when Pastor was saying, how big is your blessing? Is it like this or is it enormous? is that he wanted to experience more. Although he is a friend of God, he, he talks to him face to face. He said, that's not enough. It's, I want more, and I want more. Um, you know, Moses encountering God in such a marvelous way made him long deeply to see more of, of God's glory. And, uh, and that's what we need uh, as a church. So uh, I'm gonna use an illustration to kinda use this. Uh, everybody's been asking me, what's the hula hoop for, all right? So uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna do this because I don't know how to. Uh, but um, just to kinda illustrate uh, how it is to have the presence of God in our lives, to experience his glory in all of this. Brother Bong, I need you. That, that's why he wore that shirt, to match me. Yep, okay, so you're not gonna do this. <laughs> all right, so this is us. Imagine Brother Bong is us. In our life, there is a circle, there is a, a bucket or a, a container, right? A circle in our lives that we fill 
with things. All right? So I'm going to have you hold on to that for a little, just like that. All right? So it could be a lot of things that we put in there. All right? So it could be uh, his family that we put in there. So wife, Mrs. Coloma, come up here, please. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to have you go in there. So we feel... So he feels his, uh, get a little closer because we're going to have more people. Huh? All right? So in our lives, we, we feel it with ourselves, you know, maybe a family, uh, maybe our job. Let me see. Uh, Trey, come up here. <laughs> right, it's okay, you step forward. Go. All right, so I'm going to have you go. I'm in here. There you go. All right. Good. All right. So our job, it could be, um, you know, our hobbies, friends. So uh, let me see. I need to find someone who's been in here. Uh, Becca, come here. In. Let me see if we can, one more maybe. Okay, so, so we feel it with the jobs, family, friends, uh, hobbies. Uh, I need to find someone that would fit. Oh. Jonathan? Mm. I'm not sure. All right. <laughs> There you go. All right. All right. So, our lives, our lives are like that. You know, we fill it in with a lot of stuff. All right. But we need the presence of God, His glory in our lives. So, I'm going to need the presence of God. Come over here, brother. He's not going to fail. <laughs> He's not going to fail, of course. That's me. See, the glory of God is something that we have to make room for in our lives. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Something that we have to make room for. All right? And the reason is, uh, come here, brother. You, you can stick your hand in there, right? In the back, yeah. <laughs> All right? So sometimes we have a little bit, a little bit of the glory of God in our lives, but still full of stuff. But we need to make room for the glory of God to be in, in our lives. And sometimes the, the main reason why we do not experience the glory and the presence of God is that because we are filled with our own personal glory. You know, the glory of being handsome and uh, sexy wife and a six-figure job and all the stuff that we have in our lives. Because all of it is glorifying ourselves. And so there is no room for the glory of God. But in order to experience that, we have to make room for the glory of God. So... Um, <laughs> all right, so, all right, Trey, I'm going to have you come out if you can. All right, all right, there you go, all right. So, um, so now he can put a little bit of himself in there, all right? Sometimes we have to let go of a little bit more, okay? Okay, all right, I think you can fit in there, bro. So that... The fullness of his presence is in our lives. So there is, the glory is not his anymore, but the glory of God is the one that is um, 
prominent in, in, in our lives. And that's what we should be doing. Uh, we need to take an inventory so that we can make space for his presence so that we can experience his glory and everything else. All right, thank you. Uh, all right. If you want a hula hoop, you can have this. <laughs> all right, I'm almost done. Uh, Jonathan, I'm gonna need the team to come up here, all right? So whatever space that we create for God, he would fill it in abundantly. So he cannot fill us if we are not empty. So when we come to a place in our lives and say, you know, Jesus, I need more of you, the question that we should be asking is, how empty are you? Or how willing are you to empty the stuff in your life so that he can come in and, and fill you. So uh, in, in now that we are in, uh, in modern times, it says that the, this body of us is the tent, the tent of the Holy Spirit. And the question is, how much room do we have for him? How much of our time how much of our mind and our heart are focused on the things of this world so that there is no space for him. And, and it's easy, easy, very easy to get tangled into things. And, you know, as I'm saying this, I'm talking to myself as well because uh, I'm sure for most of us that is, that is a fight that we go through every single day. Uh, but the thing is, God has an invitation for us. So regardless, um, we do not need to, to make ourselves worthy. We can come as we are and be and experience his presence. So uh, I'm going to ask everybody to stand up. And as we worship, um, I'm going to open the altar. Um, and if that is you and your desire is to experience more of God, to experience his glory, to experience his presence, it is an open invitation and you can come. It doesn't matter if you feel unworthy or not, God still wants to commune with you. He said he's willing to be face to face with you. He's willing to be your friend, but you got to detach yourself from the things of this world for the time being and, and be with him. So if that is you, as we worship, um, I'm going to have you come up so we can, we can worship him. Jonathan? Show me your glory Show me your glory Show me your glory Lord Show me your glory Show me your glory Show me your glory, oh Lord. Show as me as you your are, glory. How much you are, I, I encourage you to come forward and experience. Show me your glory. You do not need to be like the Israelites. We're in. We're contented where we are, or scared because God would harm us. No, He wanted to be your friend. You wanted to have a relationship with you. 
So I encourage you. I want to see your glory Thank as Jesus. Moses did. Fascists of life 